I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. When Google released its top how-to searches for 2018, number one was how to vote. Number two was how to register to vote. And that's just the latest evidence that when it comes to understanding how government works, most Americans would get a failing grade. In fact, a 2018 survey by the Annenberg Public Policy Center found that more than two-thirds of Americans cannot name the three branches of government. Three in four Americans can name all three stooges. Hmm. Anyway, less than half the public can name a single Supreme Court justice. Sandra Day O'Connor, who was the first woman to serve on the high court, was concerned that people didn't understand the basics of government. So 10 years ago, she founded iCivics, a nonpartisan nonprofit that teaches civics education to students using technology and games to make the lessons more engaging. Today, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who's the first Latina on the high court and a member of the iCivics board, has taken up the challenge. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, it's so nice to have you with us it's in so our good. studio. What Thank a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting My me. My pleasure. If we were to go out in the street here mm -hmm. and just talk to random people about civics, I would guarantee you that nine out of 10 would roll their eyes and hearken back to some teacher lecturing <laughs> them in seventh grade and think, oh God, boring, boring, boring. And I know iCivics has worked very hard to kind of change the presentation about civics. Well, iCivics is all about games. We have 19 games that teach civics. And the kids play those games and learn about our government. One of the most popular great games is Do I Have a Right? And the characters on the video game are lawyers and clients with uh, potential problems. And they go up to the lawyer and they tell the lawyer their problem. And they ask the lawyer, do they have a right? Do they have a claim? And the lawyer tells them yes or no. The lawyer is the student playing the game. So it's a real life participation. Just a couple of days after the Parkland school shooting, Emma Gonzalez, who was one of the young people who sort of emerged out of it, talked about how during the shooting, that because of what she had been learning in her AP government class, that they were debating sort of the issues about guns. And, and she said this, some discussions on the subject even occurred during the shooting while students were hiding in the closets. I mean, talking about how because they had been trained and frankly, in the state of Florida, civics had been mandated. It has been in the lead of returning civic education to schools. And it's also one of the states that most uses the iCivic games. By the way, the statistics are very clear. The students who are involved in civic education training are not only uh, more likely to stay involved through the rest of their life, it improves their literacy skills. These students are proven to do better in school because they understand more the value of education. It's quite ironic that many of the school systems in the United States are requiring their students to pass a citizenship test. How ironic that people who are becoming citizens know more about our government than citizens who already exist. What compelled you to come in and take over, adopt some of the work of Justice Sandra Day O'Connor? Well, Sandra Day O'Connor was my role model. We're about 20 years apart in age. And in 1979, when I graduated from law school, there were no women on the Supreme Court. There were no women on the highest court of New York where I lived. And there were very few women who were judges. And the number of women lawyers was very small as well. I was entering a profession that I wasn't sure was welcoming of women. In 1980, Sandra Day O'Connor gave me hope. Not about becoming a justice, but about making progress in the legal profession and the hope that I could achieve something worthwhile while I was there. So did she reach out to you? What, what brought you in <laughs> to... No, I wish I could say she did that directly. I did it to myself, actually. <laughs> I was at an event honoring her, and the head of the iCivics organization was speaking in tribute of Sandra Day O'Connor. And she was explaining the iCivics organization in more detail than I knew at the time. 
And a little while later, she came back to me and she said, you know, Justice O'Connor is stepping back more and more <laughs> from public life. Um, the iCivics board would love to have another justice be as active as Justice O'Connor was. So once you gamify it and you sort of make them understand that civics is about current day laws, opportunities, rights. We are in a deep crisis surrounding civic participation. For one of the most robust republic uh, democracies in the world, we have one of the lowest voter uh, registration and participation numbers in the world. Yet there's hope. Look at some of the incredibly long lines that people stand on to vote. Despite horrible weather, I've watched lines in Florida with the heat beating down on people. They don't leave, they stay. So what we have to go back to doing is to exciting people about their voice in their government.